I'm living in a community. And what does it mean to live in a community? Oh. With four families from different generations. And why do people love this crazy way or unusual way of living? I'll share a bit about being available and how being available challenges the way of vulnerability in hospitality. Seven years now, we live in close to Arnhem, in a house in the middle of the city where we live with four couples and three small children. We eat, we pray, we love, we pray, we play, and we cry together. And in the evening, around eight o'clock, people trickle in and they walk down a narrow staircase and enter a almost just tidy kitchen where we had dinner with two families. And just in a brief moment of meeting, we meet there in the kitchen and then we walk further. We walk further to the prayer room and we are becoming quiet. We find a place in the circle and on a bench, or we are kneeling on a prayer bench. The candle is lit and illuminates the prayer space. We pray our expressions of faith. Lord, you have always given bread for the coming day. And though I'm poor, today I believe. Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day. And though I'm weak, today I believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day. And though of anxious heart, today I believe. And then we take a moment of silence, a time of reflection. We pray for the neighborhoods. We, every week we receive prayer topics from the uh, drop-in center of the Roman Catholic Church in our area. We pray for the city, we pray for the specific topics of the week, and we pray for each other and for the people we love. And after our prayers, we open the door to the kitchen, and there is a pot of tea and the smell of freshly ground coffee. We share our stories of today, and we share the stories of our week. And once or twice a week, we eat together, sometimes with the community who lives in the house, sometimes with the community, the broader community. We have a potluck meal in the big kitchen next to the prayer space. And when eating together, we don't cook for everyone. But what we do, we share. There's always something on the table because everyone brings something to the table. There's always a mix of dishes at the table and it smells amazing, and this smells amazing. There's always something new to taste. And once upon a time, we, didn't, we haven't lived there very long. We are invited to, our, to the kitchen to join a group of people who had a meeting over there, a meeting for students and starters, people in the early 20s. And I was welcomed in my own kitchen. It's a, spe a special experience to be welcomed in the kitchen you think you own. So I walked down the stairs into the kitchen and I was welcomed by all the people who were already at the table. Nice to have you here. Nice joining us for dinner. And I meet new people, I greeted new people, and some people I already know, some people were new, and I warmed up my leftovers and put them on the table. And gradually the table fills with more and more and more different kinds of dishes and it smells amazing. I enjoyed the conversations around the table and I enjoy, enjoyed, enjoyed the food itself. And suddenly a man came in a bit later. I didn't know him, 
But he walks in and he, fe he feels at home because he opens the cupboard where the pens were, he takes out the frying pan and puts it on the stove. He puts the pen on the table when he was ready, slides in and scoops his plate full of the nice dishes which were on the table. And when I was there in that situation, I was first, first uncomfortable because I thought, this is my kitchen. Someone I don't knew, know is just opening the cupboards and putting everything out. And he starts to cook as if he lives here. And then I realized this kitchen is not mine. Even though I'm here every day, this kitchen belongs to the community. And I, the second thing I realized is I'm now a guest in this kitchen. I'm not the host. And that means that I need to let go things that I need to surrender. And the third thing, what I realized was this is a miracle. This is why we live like this. That people are at home with each other in this kitchen, that people can share life with each other. And in a way, this is a kind of confrontation with hospitality, with being, hosp with being hospitable. And I realize that more and more hospitality means to me that, that it's it means that, be, that, I'm, that I'm a guest myself. It starts with being a guest. That was always also what Jesus always did. Just be there. Listen, share stories, be with people, instead of focusing on helping people or caring for people, people want to be with each other. People want to be listened to. People want to cook themselves and share what they can give. And that also means that the con our concept of potluck meals or leftovers is not a kind of laziness. It's a kind of intentional hospitality, which means that everyone is both host and guest, which means that everyone can share what they have. They share what they have, they can give what they have, and everyone got to taste what, it, what another one has to give. And for me, this is one of the bright images of the kingdom of the family of God.